affects emotional health? Well, certainly for mental health, there's a whole category, I'm sure many of you know about this, called the adaptogens. These are botanicals that have very broad, broad effects like rhodiola rosea, which is now being used by psychiatrists worldwide in place of antidepressant drugs that don't work. Um, with very, very good positive results, we see work coming out of Columbia University Medical Center and uh, New York University Hospital with regard to that. We also see with the uh, herbal extract ashwagandha, which I'll be speaking about tomorrow morning quite a bit, um, greatly improved mental function, improved clarity of thought, improved, improved recall, short-term and long-term memory, thought formation, the ability to perform mental work, and greatly reduced stress. Um, with plant medicines, and I don't worry, I won't go on for, forever about this, I'll be brief, but um, plant medicines are not like pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals may be t are typically one single molecular compound with a target, a desired target. They're supposed to do a something in your body. Botanicals may have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred different compounds, thereby working in the body in a variety of ways. And, and specifically, rhodiola rosea and ashwagandha demonstrate profound benefits for overall function, cardiovascular system, immune system, kidney health, liver detoxification, uh, brain function, and more with virtually no toxicity. When you look at the, the uh, long-term use of these, ashwagandha enjoying about 4,000 years of use that we know of among hundreds of millions of people with a great safety record, and rhodiola rosea, probably an equal amount of time and, and probably somewhat less of a number, but still immense. We see that we have in these two botanicals great aid not only for overall energy, endurance, and stamina, but also for improved mood, for improved uh, mental clarity, and for an overall better feeling. And just to close on this, when you can take an herb that you can feel, then you really get that plant medicine works. If you take milk thistle to detoxify your liver, hopefully nobody goes, wow, I can really feel those Billy Verdens and Billy Rubens working in my liver right now. That's crazy talk. But when you have more energy, when you sleep better, when your sex life is better, when you get up in the morning, feel thoroughly rested, when you've got enough of whatever you need to power through the day, when you're more inspired and when you're happier, that's an experience. And when you get the right botanicals, you can have that experience. These are not cure-alls. These will not solve all your emotional problems. These will not take care of every little thing. But they can, if you stay with them, radically improve the quality of your life in remarkable and positive ways. Thank you. And let's not forget the ultimate adaptogen, ginseng. I'm on. <laughs> so from an integrative perspective, you know, going back to the original question, because I know that we're talking about brain health, but I just want to say in general, you're talking about if you were to go to someone's house and look in their cupboard, right? So going back to the original question, I'm always looking at, at first, since that's my area of specialty, is what is, what, what is the person taking to lower their inflammatory exposure or their inflammation in their body? I'll be giving a lecture tomorrow at 4, so hopefully you come and listen to it, or you can take a look at my book, An Inflammation Nation, to learn more about that. Also looking at things that are strengthening your immune system, right? Because it's always about lowering inflammation, increasing your immune system. Uh, if there's any problems with the patient's microbiome or someone has gut problems, making sure that there's some kind of product or, or uh, aspect in that area. Adaptogens are very important, so I, I, do, I do definitely agree with the, what they were talking about before. But when we have the appropriate guidance, that, you know, when we go to learn about plant medicines, then we like to look at plant medicines as they were designed to be delivered. And so certain adaptogens are given at certain ages, actually, and certain times of the year. And so we, we go one step further when we have the understanding of not just understanding that this is a class of plants that are good and they're relatively safe uh, and they're effective, but they're like, we like to then look at how the 
traditional medicines were prescribed. And that's sometimes lost in the supplement industry because you'll see tons of formulas or tons of things are just seen as, you'll probably see it as well, tons of adaptogen formulas or tons of tinctures. And they all can have wonderful benefits, but we like to go a little bit further and say, how can we then maximize the use of those things? So when it comes to nutrients, for example, like we test for those things because it's not just saying we do need to eat a whole food plant-based diet, number one, and I'll talk about you know, foods that trigger inflammation tomorrow, but what we like to look at further on is like supplements are supplementing the diet, but they're never replacing the diet. So we can never look at redundancy. I don't look like, you know, don't take a supplement that you're pretty much eating. I look at that that way. Now, we like to test for the level. So if there's a deficiency, then that's when supplementation is magical because then it means the body was needing it or the person's microbiome was uh, dysfunctional in absorbing it or they just couldn't get access or they're not eating enough of that. But we can then design a program by looking at testing and looking at which foods have those nutrients so that we can really be guided on giving food as medicine. And then when we take plant medicines, we like to make sure that their potency purity, safety, and efficacy is assured so we can deliver it as plant medicines.